What is up, future fighters? And today, I want to talk about a theory I have as far as the development of Marvel Future Fight, and I think something that I've picked up on that the devs are trying to do. Basically, picture Marvel Future Fight as a big boat. The devs are on the boat with, with paddles, and they're trying to go in a particular direction. And I guess we would be the people trapped inside the boat or somehow on another boat behind the first boat being dragged by the first boat, uh, basically going wherever it takes us. It's not a very good analogy, but it's one I just thought of while I was recording this video. But before we get into my ideas, I do want to make just two announcements here. The first announcement is that on yesterday's video regarding the Danger Room rewards, I goofed up uh, typical, typical silly cynic Alex, doesn't know how to do math. <laughs> And so, uh, for all of you out there that are in uh, the first or second grade, I will do some basic math for you now to confirm that uh, 7 multiplied by 15 is not 75. So we're going to break this down as my first and second grade and 12th grade math teachers taught me. Thank you so much. Uh, 7 times 10 is 70. And then 7 times 5 is 35. Those are from your multiplication tables. So when you add 70 and 35, and you can do this when you multiply uh, a single number by a number with two digits, I believe, uh, you get 105. I honestly shouldn't give any advice about doing math or any sort of math strategies or tricks or tips while I'm making a video because I have no way of remembering if these are actually correct. Uh, and I also have no way of verifying them on the spot. Anyways, yes, the number of weekly bios that you get from the Danger Room is actually 105 random bios, not 75. So I, I was off by 30, which is a pretty big number to be off by. But the rewards still need to be buffed, okay, Net Marble? That's not, you're not weaseling your way out of that one, damn it. Uh, secondly, I am going to be tier 3 Cyclops today, tonight on Twitch. So if you want to check that out, if you want to see me playing with tier 3 Cyclops, if you want to see me possibly testing an Obelisk, possibly testing a CTP of Rage, and etc., um, then yeah, what you want to do is go head on over to twitch.tv, twitch.tv slash uh, And if you don't know when I go live, join the Discord, which is link in the somewhere. And uh, then I will ping you when I'm live on Twitch on Discord. Very, very exciting. So, what is my grand theory for where the Netmarble devs are taking Marvel Future Fight? Well, it is obviously away from autoplay. And this is something that actually uh, dates back for a long time to, to the, you know, the game in its first year, and its second year, and its third year. Uh, and so, you know, to give you an, an idea of why I picked up on this idea, I started thinking about Danger Room. And I, and I was like, oh, Danger Room's a really, it's a really cool game mode, it's fun, it's got some problems, but, you know, it's generally really cool, but you can't autoplay it. So you actually have to spend more time playing Marvel Future Fight. And then I thought, well, what game mode am I playing besides Danger Room that takes a long time? Well, you know what, I'm playing Giant Boss Raid a lot, especially Galactus. Um, and, I, and I was thinking, well, when did they introduce Giant Boss Raid? And then I said, oh, shit. The last three game modes, and if you count Galactus as a separate game mode, the last four game modes back to back to back to back, but not tobacco, the last four game modes back to back have all been autoplay unavailable. They are manual play only, starting all the way back with the original Master Mold Giant Boss Raid. It's, there's no autoplay. And then they introduced World Event. There's also no autoplay for World Event. And then they introduced uh, Galactus GBR in the last update. That is also no uh, autoplay available. Uh, and now, just recently, they introduced, of course, Danger Room with no autoplay. So that's four game modes uh, that don't have autoplay in them. And then I started thinking about, well, what other ideas or what other things have they been doing in the game more recently, in the last year-ish, that encourage you to play manually versus playing on auto. And the, the biggest one that I realized is new characters being introduced with the counter-attack mechanic. Now we've gotten characters as far back as, well, the giant, the, the original Giant Boss Raid update when we got Hyperion getting the counter-attack on his first skill, but we really didn't see counter-attack taking full effect uh, in a way that's actually beneficial to the character using the skill until Wolverine's Tier 3. Wolverine was was pretty much the first character to get a counter-attack that's actually meaningful because if you get the counter-attack to actually land, uh, you get a substantial buff. You get the increased damage, and he actually attacks the enemy. So it's pretty substantial, um, and people realize that the counter-slash became very, very good for PvP, and although it does activate on autoplay, it's much easier to time it correctly on manual play. Then, not that long after, Bishop got his counterattack, and I did videos showing how amazing Bishop could be if you just 
if you, not the computer, but if you timed his attack just right to interrupt Captain Marvel's fourth skill. Um, and then more recently, and in, in, a, in a bigger way, in a more impactful way, we've had Silver Surfer's uh, counterattack. And you can kind of see that the counterattacks are getting stronger and stronger as Netmarble makes more and more of them um, just by way of ranking them. So, you know, Wolverine's counterattack, kind of difficult to trigger. It gives him a damage buff, which is pretty good. Um, but he gets the guard hit regardless, but you do get the paralyze, but it doesn't apply to world bosses. So it's it's kind of, it's okay. It's not really that good. It's a bit defensive. Uh, and then you see Bishop's third skill. What, is, what does this one have? It has the same increase, but it's also got five seconds of immunity. So it's just clearly better than the guard hit. And it also has a three second paralyze and it seems to do more damage than Wolverine's attack okay we're getting a little bit better now and then of course you look at Silver Surfer's tier three uh, third skill that has counterattack and I don't need to tell you just by just by looking at this text you know that this is a much much better counterattack skill than Wolverine's and Bishop's combined so Netmarble I mean part of it has to do with the with obviously the value of the character we're comparing Bishop who is a free-to-play Dimension Rift character versus Silver Surfer who is a native tier 2 obviously they're not going to be the same but Netmarble could have put some of those third skill buffs on his other skills but they chose to put them on his third skill things like iframe ignore things like healing etc so you do get to you do see the fact that they're experimenting more and more and they're getting more and more liberal with the buffs that they give to these sort of counterattack skills. And you can argue that the counterattack skills are just as effective on, on autoplay because chances are you are gonna get hit because so many characters nowadays have so many hits, so it's just impossible to, to have downtime. There's no quiet time or there's no sort of you know mute dead zone where no one's attacking um, in, in timeline battle, which is where this is mostly being used, but it's much much easier to trigger uh, these effects when you're playing manually and when it, when you come when it comes to these effects you want to trigger them at specific times and that led me into realizing that there's actually even another um, game mode, like not game mode, but another um, design choice that that appears in PvP game modes that Netmarble has intended to sort of nerf autoplay um, and encourage more manual play and that is of course iframe ignore. Because when it comes to iframe ignore, it's an extremely powerful, extremely offensive skill. Obviously, you know, hey, I'm in an iframe, I'm protected. Psych, you're not, I'm coming for you, you're mine. Uh, and, and of course, Captain Marvel is the poster child for uh, sniping you no matter where you are with an unblockable, undodgeable, well, unless you're Ant-Man, um, attack in photon combo. Like, it's, it's just, it's been, it's been the bane of the game. It's been terrorizing people in timeline battle for almost a year now, for, for eight months. Uh, and of course, it's much easier to play around her fourth skill if you are playing on manual, if you're not auto-playing. For example, if you're about to lose your character because Captain Marvel's going into her fourth skill in timeline battle, just before she does her fourth skill, because she has a small little wind-up, you can switch characters. You're gonna, your other character's gonna die, but you can sacrifice someone else. The AI on auto-play does not know how to do that. Secondly, saving skills. And this is where more skill comes into play. This is where playing manually is so much better. There's a huge skill gap that appears here when you're talking about autoplay versus the actual person controlling the character. If I know that my Silver Surfer is fighting, let's say, a Thanos, and I can see that the next character is Captain Marvel, I know as the player in my head, save Silver Surfer's third skill if you can. Uh, because if I don't need the heal, if I can kill Thanos with 1, 2, 4, and 5, I should do that. Because then when I face Captain Marvel, I will have the third skill ready. And then even if she doesn't use her fourth skill right away, if she uses any other skill, I can then choose, do I want to use the third skill or do I want to continue saving it as my sort of trump card for her fourth skill. And the same goes for Bishop and to a lesser extent Wolverine. And so that is a, that becomes a huge advantage that you have um, by just turning off autoplay and by just playing manually. And that is not a small difference because although they haven't buffed up the rewards for timeline battle, it's become increasingly competitive to just exist in, in timeline and, and to actually win. Um, and it's harder and harder to stay you know, anywhere near the top 10, the top 50, the top 100, unless you're doing not only tons of refreshes, but you're doing lots of wins. You're getting tons of wins um, because it's a lot harder to win because there are so many characters that are strong. There are so many mechanics that can punish you heavily. 
So we've got iframe ignore, we've got counter attack, uh, which ha also has iframe ignore if you get hit. And then we have all these new game modes coming uh, in that don't have any opportunity for autoplay. So what exactly does this mean? Well, I think that first of all, it's this is a great thing. I think this is amazing for Marvel Future Fight. Uh, everyone's going to have their own opinion about this, of course, but my opinion is less autoplay is better for the game. Um, and we, you know, we might disagree on my uh, sort of stance, but I do think that the autoplay mechanic is something that is a little bit more um, welcome or a little bit more celebrated in perhaps other parts of the world, but I do think that a mostly North American audience, an, uh, an audience that loves Marvel uh, and then kind of grew up on it more so, seeing it on TV, you know, more of a Western audience, I would say, is probably less comfortable or less familiar with autoplay because we grew up playing games, especially on PC, but even Game Boy games, where there's literally no autoplay. The best that you have for autoplay, or the closest thing that you get to autoplay in these kinds of games, you know, if you grew up playing WoW or Diablo 1 or Ultima Online or whatever, is things like auto run. You can click a button, like press the Z key or the Shift key, to have your character run automatically, but you have to do everything else. Now, there are reasons for autoplay. Autoplay is good in small bursts or in certain areas of the game. I do appreciate autoplay in Marvel Future Fight, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying autoplay is bad or it's the devil or we should get rid of it entirely. But I think that too much autoplay makes the game not only seem less legitimate and less fun, it also makes the game seem like it's much, much less skill oriented. So in the past, when I used to stream this game in, its, in, in the earlier days of, of my Twitch channel and my YouTube channel, I would have some people coming in, oh, man, are you even playing the game? They would comment, are you even playing the game? And fair, you know, fair point, I'm sitting here auto playing all of the content, but there was no point in not auto playing it because it was all auto play content to begin with. But now that's not the case anymore because Netmarble has tried deliberately to reduce the amount of autoplay in the game and they've tried deliberately to introduce new mechanics and new character designs that actually discourage you from playing on auto and actually encourage you to play on manual. So I salute them for doing this rather than just taking the autoplay button away from things like timeline just by default and not giving players the opportunity. They are doing both and they're saying, okay, if you don't have the time, if you want to autoplay, you can still do it, but obviously you're not going to have the same results as someone who's playing live, and that should be a given. I mean, why should the autoplay person get the same results and the same rewards as me? That just doesn't make any sense. It limits your design space. It's just bad. It's just bad gameplay. Um, but then on the other hand, for players that have the time to put in, they are going to reap more benefits, uh, and they're going to feel like, and they're going to be celebrated as better uh, gamers more skilled in the game and they're gonna get rewards for that there's leaderboards etc you can see the world event leaderboard you can see the danger room leaderboard and so on and so forth so I honestly think it's absolutely amazing it's fantastic that was one of the biggest complaints one of the biggest criticisms I've had um, since I started playing Marvel Future Fight I felt that the game was too way too autoplay oriented I had never seen a game before for example that not only had autoplay but it had autoplay plus plus I was like what the hell is this there's actually three forms of autoplay there's autoplay with no plus one plus and then two pluses um, but they've done a really good job of saying you know what autoplay is for kind of mindless grinding and things like story mode basically everything here is autoplay friendly and autoplayable uh, and then everything here with a few exceptions is pretty much not autoplay friendly and you have to take control uh, the game modes that are autoplay only I might add are the wor in my opinion the worst game modes in Marvel Future Fight the game modes that have the least transparency the game modes that have the most RNG the game modes that have the worst rewards and the game modes that have the most frustration from the players who actually invest the time into them and of course i'm talking about alliance tournament and alliance conquest the, the i would say the most garbage game modes and the game modes that are the most desperately in need of reworks or complete revamps teardowns and remodelings um and then we have some game modes here i mean co-op is autoplay uh, basically only, like, no one plays co-op manually, uh, but then World Boss Invasion, Giant Boss, and World Event are completely non-autoplay friendly. The last thing I want to leave you with in this entire spiel, this whole thing, and I'm curious, I really want to hear from you guys, what do you think? Do you like autoplay? Do you not like autoplay? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? The ver but the very last thing I want to leave you with is a little tip here. As much as I dislike autoplay, as much as I want the game to be more skill-based and to be less autoplay-based, 
There is one game mode that is not auto playable, aka Legendary Battle, that I have found a way, and someone else actually showed this to me, I don't know who it was, but thank you so much for showing it to me, uh, where you can auto play. And it is only, thank you for the invite, Venser, but not right now, it is only on the Thor uh, Legendary Battle, and it's only the Bifrost Battle, I believe. Um, and basically, you just have to, uh, you just have to get past the cutscene. So you're gonna get a cutscene here with uh, Hella. You're gonna press, uh, you're gonna kind of swipe past or, or click past the, the little cutscene here with with the, the Queen of the Dead. Uh, and then you're just gonna sit back and watch Valkyrie, Hulk, and Loki just do their thing. This is autoplay on a non autoplay game mode. So thanks, Netmarble, for allowing me just a few more seconds of rest before I jump back into the danger room or dive into some giant boss raid. I personally love the direction this game is going in. 2019 has been the best year for Marvel Future Fight ever, and it's getting better, hopefully, because there's still a few months left for some, you know, smash, grand slam, home run uh, updates. Uh, I have to do four of these videos a day, or four of these videos a month, so this video is brought to you by, or is part of the Netmarvel Star Agent program. Thank you guys so much for watching that and supporting me, and thank you Netmarvel for allowing me to be part of the Star Agent program. Subscribe if you guys enjoyed the content and you want to support me, and of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you later today. Take care.